What's going on guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to work on the search function for a blog with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add the search function so we can search for blog posts. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to work on this search bar, and this is going to introduce all kinds of weird problems that we probably never even thought of. The main problem being, this is in our nav bar, which is in our extended base.html. So there is no actual view for the base file. So how do we pass variables in? How do we get a CSRF token? How do we pass the form in? All those things. It's a little tricky. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that. And we're also going to set up the actual search itself so we can search the blog post for, you know, anything you want to search for. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So let's head over to our templates and our nav bar. And let's come down here to the bottom of the nav bar. And you can see here is our actual form. You can see it has a form. Yeah, there's one input. Now it doesn't have a name. So the first thing I'm going to do is give the form field a name. And let's call this searched. So this will then pass through the form. So we'll be able to know what they actually searched for. And then up here, we need several things here. First, this needs to be a method equals post. You know, when we make a search, we're posting a form to the back end. So we need a method post. We also need an action. We need to point this somewhere. Where is it? Where are we going to point this? Well, Let's do a URL for tag as we normally would. And let's send this to something called search, a page called search, a, a backend thing called search. So we need to actually create search. So we'll do that in just a second. Now we also need a CSRF token for this page. A CSRF token is a cross site request forgery token. It protects your forms from getting hijacked by hackers. We've done this all the time in the past with other forms. We know all about it. So we just need a form dot hidden underscore tag. And that's a function. Now this is going to introduce a problem because this form is nowhere on this page. And we can't really pass it to this page because this is the nav bar. And if we head over to our base.html file, we remember we included the nav bar. So in any page of our website, for instance, the home page, we're calling our base.html file with this extends tag, right? So how do we pass variables and stuff into there? So we're going to look at that in just a second. But for now, Let's head back over to our nav bar and we've created now this search thing. We need to build that out in our view. So let's head over to hello.py, our main file. And let's just come down here and let's uh, create search function. And this is going to be at app route. We need a route. And so let's call this search and we need methods equal to. And for now, let's just put post because we don't actually want to create a page that people can go to unless they've posted to it. Unless they've searched for something, then a page will pop up and it'll go there. So we want methods equal post. And we've done methods in other, you know, routes and things. So, okay, let's create this guy. So dev, so let's define search and we're good to go here. Just pass for now. So whenever somebody searches, we want to output the results on some page. So we need to create that page. So let's head over to our templates, create new file up here and go file save as and let's save this as search.html and let's see let's just grab any page of our site here and grab some code and paste it in here so here we might say h2 you searched for dot 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 i don't know whatever good enough for now so now this file exists we'll play around with this in a little bit let's head back over here so the first thing we need is a form right now we could do this without creating a form and we could just sort of pass the data. I think we did that way back at the beginning of the course with our user name page, but we want to use a CSRF token because we're going to be posting to the database itself. So let's come down here to our webforms.py file and let's just create a new form, create a search form. So I'm just going to copy this thing and paste it in. Instead of login form, let's call this search form. And instead of username, this is going to be searched. Because remember in our nav bar, we called this input field searched, right? So let's head back to our web forms. And this will be searched. 
And let's validate this. We want to make sure they actually type something. So, okay. Uh, now we don't need this password field, but we do need a submit button. So we'll leave that. Okay, so that looks good. So this search form now, we save this file. We can use this in our hello.py file. We have to import it first. So let's head back up to the top here and let's find our web forms. There it is. From web forms, we want to import that search form. You can see these are all the other forms we've imported, right? All right. So now let's come down here and set this up. So our form is going to equal that search form. Okay. So now let's go if form dot validate on submit. There we go. So if somebody submitted the form, we want to validate it. And let's create a variable called post dot searched. And that's going to equal our form dot searched dot data. And for now, let's just return the render underscore template of that search dot HTML file. And let's just pass in form equals form. And if we want to, we could pass in this thing too, just for fun. So let's go ahead and do that. Why not? So let's go searched equals post dot searched. So now we should be able to use this searched on our search page. So we could say you search for, and then maybe down here, H3, or maybe just a P tag, we can call searched, right? Whatever, just for fun. Let's go ahead and try that. So we're not actually calling the database yet, but we could see at least if our form is working and passing something in. Now, if we save this and head back over to the website, hit reload, we're going to get an error. So it's saying, hey, form is undefined because up there on our nav bar, remember, we're passing this form dot hidden tag and our website has no idea what that is because this nav bar doesn't have anything in our hello.py file where it's sending this form. We're sending this form to the search page but not to the nav bar page. So how do we pass anything to an extended base file, to a nav bar, to anything like that? How can we do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We could just come up here and say, pass stuff to nav bar. And to do that, we call an app dot context underscore processor. So this context processor will pass stuff into, you know, our base file, basically. So I'm going to define this as base because we're sort of passing this to our base.html file. You could call it anything you want. It doesn't matter at all. So let's call it define base. And what we want to do is create a variable form, right? And that's going to equal our search form. So we could copy this from down here, paste that in. And now we need to pass that to the page. How do we do that? We just go return dict, short for dictionary, and we want to pass form equals form. So now this search form can get passed into our base.html file, which then sort of passes it to our nav bar because the base.html file includes the nav bar, right? So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, hit reload. Hopefully this works. Boom. Now it does work. If we view our page source now and come down to the nav bar, you can see there's a CSRF token, or all the gobbledygook is on our form. So that looks good. So let's test this out. Let's say uh, John Elder. I want to search for John Elder. It says you searched for John Elder. All right. So the form is working. We're able to pass stuff to the back end, do something with it, send it to the page and put it up on the screen. So, so far, so good. Now we just need to query the database and run a quick search for whatever we searched for. Now, here's where we need to make a decision. Do we want to search this text of the blog post? Do we want to search the title of the blog post? Do we want to search for authors? What do we want to search for? To me, it sort of makes sense that I want to search for the content, you know, the, the text of the blog post. I want, I'm looking for some specific thing in a blog post, so I want to search for the stuff in the blog post. I don't really care about the title so much. I want, I want to search all this content. So that's what we're going to do. So let's head back over to our search thing here. And let's query the database. And I'm going to query, I'm going to call it posts. So we're looking for posts, right? And this is just going to be posts.query for now. And remember, if we go down to the bottom of our page here, so all of our models, here we have our posts model. And in our post model, there's title, content, date posted, slug, poster ID, regular ID. We want to search for content, right? So we'll copy this, head back over here. And inside of here, let's go ahead and query the database. So here, let's get data from submitted form. So to query the database, there's probably tons of different ways you could do this, but just not thinking very much on it, I thought, well, oh, this will work. So we'll try this first. Let's go posts. 
equals, now this is going to be posts.filter. So remember, this is our query, posts. We want to filter by posts.content. Remember, down here in our model, remember the content, that's the, you know, the content of the blog post, right? So we want to search for, we want to filter by that content, post.content. And we, we want it to be not exact matches. We want to search for things that are sort of matches, right? It doesn't have to be the exact phrase, right? If I want to search for cheese and there's a blog post where it says, I like cheese, that's going to be good enough, right? It, it needs to be like what we're searching for. Now, this will be a function. And here, we just need to pass in this thing, right? So inside of here, I'm going to call, we can add these sort of uh, concatenation type things. So we could say, search for this and post.search. And so this will allow us to search for multiple things, basically, right? So, okay, that looks good. Now, how do we want to return these results, right? So let's go posts equal posts dot order by. And here we want to order these by posts dot title. And then we want to return all of them. Okay, so now we've got this post variable. Hopefully it holds a bunch of different posts that we've found in our little filtered search here. Now we just need to pass that to our web page. So let's go posts equal posts. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this, head back over to our search page. And here, let's put some line breaks. And let's just paste in that post and see what it returns. It's not going to return anything interesting, but that's where we'll start from. So I'm going to post I'm going to search for test because we can see here it says test. This is this tests. This one does not. So there's at least two posts with the word test in it. So let's search for test. And here it says, uh, here we have an object with looks like two posts. So, okay, that looks good. But we don't want this. We want the actual post, right? So we saw that this is returning an object with multiple things. So we're going to need to loop through here with a for loop. So let's go for post in posts. And I always like to just end my for loop before I do anything else so that I don't forget. Now inside of here, we could just pass post dot title, right? And there's going to be multiple ones. So let's put line breaks in there. So this post is this thing right here. As we loop through each post in our posts, we'll get spit out on the screen. And we want the dot title because remember in our model way down here, title is one of the things in the model. So we could output the title. We could output anything you want. We could do the title, the content, the date posted, the slug, the poster ID, anything we want. But I just want the title that should work. So let's head back over here and search for test again. And here you search for test. Maybe we want that. Maybe we don't. Uh, we can play around with that. And here we see John Elder's post and Tim's post. Very cool. Now, this isn't all that useful because, well, we can't really click on these. So we probably want to be able to click on these, right? So let's head back over here. And very quickly, we can do that. Head back over to our search page. And let's just create a link, href, and close our link tag. And we can just go to our post page. There it is. And we can see on that post page, we can click on the titles. So we already know how to do that. We'll just copy this, head back over here, paste that in, put this on a different line so it's easier to read, whatever, something like that. And this is just calling a URL for tag for our post with the post ID. Because we have a post right here, we know from our model, remember, there's an ID, so we can call it, and that should work. Okay, so let's save this, head back over here, hit reload, resend, and now these are links. If we click on one, boom, it goes to the post. Very cool, very easy. Now, obviously, we might want to make this look nicer, and we'll probably do that in another video. This one's getting a little bit long, but this is what we want. So we can come back here and let's search for cheese. I like cheese. And there's a post called I like cheese. We can click on it. There it is. If we go to our post, we see down here, yep, there's I like cheese, right? And it works. So very interesting video. I really like the posting the stuff to the nav bar. That's something you don't see every day. Uh, that trips up people a lot, but very easy. We just use that app context processor thing, piece of cake. We can pass anything we want and uh, that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.